to everything from Lady Shoshana's tent is all packed up except the pillows, and they go in the trailer with the tent, I'll go tell Commander Joseph. Abby, oh, there you are. I was hoping that you would know if there was any room in Lady Shoshana's trailer. Um, it's packed. Everything fits like a puzzle piece, and it's full as always. Why? Um, well, I did some training with the village boys, and, well, I, uh... I have these extra toys and sports stuff and some new clothes, and it's all really great. Uh, Philip, you know we're allowed only so much. It all has to fit in a space allotted. Oh, but I love this stuff. It's a real treasure. Um, do you really need it? Um, it's just this little bag. Surely we can squeeze it in. Um, it's important important to whom? Oh, come on, Tabby. I thought you loved being Navad and traveling around and seeing new places and meeting new people and telling everyone about God's great love and sacrifice for us. I do love that. And I love my treasure, too. Um, you can't have them both. I heard this story. Ah, oh, so you think you're the storyteller now. Well, why not, if I know a good story to tell? Why would I listen to my little sister, since since when do I listen to you? What are you going to tell me to do? Fine, um, see you later. Okay, okay, I'll listen. Well, it seems that there were two birds, Redbird and Bluebird, who were friends, and who were about to fly south for the winter. Redbird said to Bluebird, Come on, friend, let's be off. And he flew up into the air, expecting his friend to follow. But when he looked behind him, Bluebird was not there. He flew directly back to where he'd started to find Bluebird still there, struggling to take off while carrying a large bag in his talons. What's the problem, Redbird asked. Come on, let's go. But Bluebird replied, I can't get it off the ground with my treasures. Can't you help me? Redbird tested the weight of the bag and couldn't even budge it. Friend, the two of us together could not possibly carry all this all the way to our southern home. You'll have to leave it here. Perhaps we can hide it, and you can retrieve it when you return next spring. But his friend would not listen. This is valuable. There's shiny stuff and beautiful soft cloth and bells that jingle. I can't leave it. Redbird shook his head sadly. We can't stay here all winter, and we can't take your bag. Bluebird sighed. You'll have to go on without me, uh, as I will never leave my treasure. So Redbird flew south without him, and in the south the birds, as usual, built nests and hatched chicks and fed and cared for them until they were big enough to fly and could take care of themselves. One day, to Redbird's surprise, his friend, Bluebird, appeared. Hello, he called. I've missed you. Were, were you able at last to bring your treasures? Oh, no, Bluebird said. I stayed there with my bag, but soon the shiny stuff tarnished, and the beautiful cloth faded in the sun, and the bells would no longer ring. The weather became very cold. I had no idea how cold it could get in the north, and there was nothing to eat. I finally realized that my stuff was not worth my life. So I abandoned what was left and came south. Now I'm ready to find a mate and have chicks and and fly north after they're raised. But you're too late, said Redbird. The eggs were laid and months ago and the chicks are hatched and are now fledglings flying around on their own. We're leaving in a few days to return to the north. Bluebird was shocked. <gasps> I had no idea so much time had passed, he cried. You're just in time to fly back with us, said Redbird. All right, Bluebird agreed. Oh, by the way, can you help me carry my new treasures back with me? Well, until then, Redbird had not noticed a large bag on the ground beside his friend. What treasures, he asked. Bluebird blushed as red as a bluebird can and announced, well... I happened upon an abandoned pack rat's nest and found all this wonderful stuff. Well, 
I'm sure you've guessed, Bluebird stayed in the south with his treasures until the heat and the hunger drove him north without his treasures, which by then had decayed and rotted. The same thing happened in the fall, and for the rest of the bird's life he never did find a mate or raise chicks. When he became old and died, he had not one piece of that treasure. Oh, I see what you're saying, Tabby, but you can't value your treasures above what God wants you to do. Philip, your relationship with God is your treasure. Nothing else even comes close to the value of that. Oh, for a little kid, you're pretty smart, but what do I do with all this stuff? Well, um, maybe I could help you go through all your stuff, old and new. And you might could swap some of the new stuff for some of the old that you don't love anymore. Maybe we can get it down to what will fit. Thanks, Tabby. Let's go see what we can do.